Doris Chen is head of China Research at BNP Paribas. She joins us now from Shanghai for her take on investing in China and the prospects, of course, uh, for the year ahead as well. Doris Chen, thank you very much indeed for joining us. Let's uh, first we'll get your views uh, as to where we head, because we're at a 20% fall when it comes to Hong the Hong Kong market. If we look at Shanghai, it's also down by 20%. Surely all the bad news is priced in. Well, uh, you can say that, but we do think the uh, first quarter next year there is a, uh, can be another round of sell-down, which is to say that the HSCI index can get close to 9,000 points. So uh, the idea here is that you do read all sorts of bad news and bad macro data and on the uh, and investment slowdown, export slowdown, and the property market hard landing risk. Uh, but from our on-ground channel check, we think the reality can be um, even worse than what the macro data suggests, especially in private sector, and uh, giving the a rapid uh, pullback in uh, the entrepreneurs' investment into their real business. So, uh, but this is not to say that uh, we need to be too bearish. I do think uh, there is a good chance of a, a more meaningful rally and, uh, from second quarter and the third quarter into next year, given that uh, all this slowdown definitely add the pressure for government to push much more meaningful and comprehensive easing package. Yeah, you've got to be a brave person, a brave investor if you want to get into the Chinese market, given what we've seen over the last two years. So uh, really, what is going to be the spark, the catalyst for a move upwards here? Well, we definitely need to see uh, more bad news before we see good news. And we do read uh, many land developers are struggling, but you see that on the ground, if they do give a price cut about up to 20 or 30 percent, they still clean up their inventory a lot quick. So uh, the first quarter, I think, uh, will combine with the external shock, and which will have more on the negative side, and you will have continuously bad news from the uh, local land developers. So I think the real catalyst, as you asked, and it should be the government to push in the public infrastructure investment again, which is quite similar with what they did in 2009. So uh, this would involve easing in credit, but more importantly, easing on administrative tightening, which include allowing local government to invest into more projects and allowing the home purchase restriction, and which is the real and the factor that binding on the property market sale to be removed or at least eased. Doris, a very quick word on uh, when we get the first uh, round of easing, many predicting that the reserve requirement is going to be cut this month. Uh, do you buy into that? Yeah, I think uh, there is a uh, high probability uh, on the thing. Uh, when you see that before Chinese New Year, at least, uh, we can have uh, another 50 bips uh, uh, cut. Uh, but the impact to the stock market should be dramatically lower from uh, what we saw in the last cut. You see that Hong Kong get really excited. But every new cut, every new cut, the incremental impact on the stock market should only go down. And uh, maybe into a certain level, you would read it as if, wow, the uh, situation is so bad, so central bank we have cut again, then the market can sell down instead of uh, buying into uh, the China market when uh, you read our uh, cut. So I think uh, what the, uh, the real impact for easing uh, will be much more uh, than uh, the monetary easing if we talk about our uh, cut. There should be uh, more investment. We need to see real fixed asset investment uh, breaking ground in here, especially the, uh, on the easing move or move towards the easing right. side on the property market policy. Yes. Yeah, yeah, Doris, I want to just get to your uh, sector allocation. I think your property your equal weight on, but let's just get to some of the companies that you like here as well. You like some of the people in the construction side of things, also in the gas business. Can you name some names for me of uh, who you'd be looking at? Oh, definitely. And uh, because we do think uh, the coming one year and two year, China's growth will be driven by fixed asset investment. So the names got really beaten down now, and they should be the potential outperformer. So this would include the uh, cement names, CMBM, Anhui Conch. Well, these are underperformers now for sure, but uh, that's also where the most upside will come from. And also co names, Shenhua and Yanzhou Co. And we also like machinery sector, especially the names who would benefit uh, from the infrastructure investment to pick. Back, and that would be Weichai Power, Sun International, as well as a, a Zoom line, the construction machinery. And natural gas is a, a defensive growth idea, given that from 2011 to 2015, that's where we should see China's natural gas have the most capacity growth. So that will be CR gas and aquarium energy. That's what we like. Doris, thank you so much for that, uh, Doris Chen.